Welcome to TU Delft, our world-class university in the Netherlands. A few years ago, TU Delft decided to break a few habits. To create maximum comfort for students and staff, to give room to innovative education, and for me, most importantly, to become a zero-carbon campus. Please join me today in visiting the Pulse Building, our new educational building that's meant to be an example of this new vision. Welcome to Pulse. Now this is probably not what you expect from an educational building, a fast food court with healthy food, but this is part of the TU Delft campus strategy to provide good food and good coffee for students and staff. But of course, it's not all about food and beverage. This is an educational building. So please follow me upstairs where we will meet the project leader. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Annie. Nice to see you. Thanks for receiving me. Yeah. What a wonderful building. Thank you. So tell me, what was the idea behind the building? So Pulse is a new education building of the university. And in this building, we emphasized on active learning. So there's not long lectures in where people are sitting and listening to one person for a long time, but it's actually very active, working in groups together. And it had to be energy neutral. Of course. Of course. As it's not natural. As a University of Delft, you can not have an energy neutral building. So this Fully is the first energy, energy neutral building. Okay, and did you succeed to establish that? Yes, according to the design, this is energy neutral. Of course, we will have to see how the building is going to work and mm -hmm. how the use is going to be. But if it all works out as the design, then it's going to be energy neutral. <coughs> okay, but to get there, you had a different process than normal, right? Yes, we did have a slightly different process. Um, we had all the parties in the beginning of the design, we had them all together to discuss uh, how we could accomplish a energy neutral without having one voice louder than the other. Because in a normal process, uh, an architect makes this design and then after some while, consultants, engineers are being asked to elaborate the design, right? So this was different here. Yes, we really had to, had to have them all together from the start. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it was a tough uh, process, but I think uh, it worked out well. Yeah, so um, have you accomplished everything or are you satisfied? No, we didn't accomplish everything. We had some nice to haves, which had, because of costs, we couldn't uh, we couldn't go through with them. Okay. Uh, but overall, we're very proud and happy with the result. Yeah, I can fully understand. Now you have to go to a meeting. Um, I'm going to have a look in the building and see some more technical features. Good. So thank you very much, Lucy. Enjoy. For showing. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. This is a space where we can see one of the most important energy measures, the building layout. In the beginning, the architect wanted to put the classroom on this side. This is a southwest elevation, receiving sun from 11 o'clock in the morning until sunset. Very warm. We decided to swap the whole concept and put open work spots here and traffic whilst organizing educational rooms on the northeast side. This is a classroom. Here we can see three elements of the climate design. The heating and cooling, the lighting and the ventilation. Low temperature heat or high temperature cold is provided through the underfloor heating system. Ventilation is managed by CO2 measurements. So if there's more students in the room, there's more ventilation. And then lighting is directly connected to the direct current coming from the PV panels. Therefore, we don't have to convert it to alternating currents, which would lose a lot of energy. Another passive design measure is daylight access. Please have a look at this ceiling. It's a shaded shape that allows daylight in from the north, while the tilted side is very important for the building. Because on the roof, we will there find the power station of the building, the PV panels. Please, let's have a look. What a sunny day, what a heat, and what a solar power. You can imagine that a building like Pulse needs a lot of electricity. And the best way to generate that in a sustainable way is through solar power. What we see here are 490 solar panels that provide all the energy the building needs.
But it's not only electricity that a building needs. In a climate like this, you still need heat in wintertime and cold in summertime. So what was established for the Pulse building is a so-called aquifer thermal heat storage in the underground. So what is happening? They take heat out of the building in summertime, store it in a well and use that in wintertime. In summertime, it's the other way around. You use the coal that was stored in wintertime. And so you get a very sustainable heat and cold system. So you may understand why TU Delft is proud of its Pulse building. It's the first in line of net zero energy buildings. It's user friendly and it adds to the enlivenment of the entire campus. As you may see well around me.